The movie begins with a brutal fight between a fighter named Wynn and his opponent. At first, their fight was evenly balanced, but all that changed when the opponent got help from a shaman who used dark magic to weaken Wynn. Thanks to that, Wynn became dazed and almost lost consciousness, like someone who was hypnotized. But luckily, Wynn's father realized what was happening. He then looked for the shaman and beat him mercilessly, causing Wynn's opponent to lose his chance to win. Finally, Wynn succeeded in launching a fatal attack and won the match. After the match, Wynn saw his father being approached by two people who were willing to buy his amulet necklace at any price, but because his father didn't want to sell it, the two were very upset and began forcing him to give his amulet. Wynn came to separate them before the situation escalated. On the way home, Wynn asked what the people before really wanted, and his father couldn't say much because it wasn't the time to explain it yet. His father also reminded him of the words he always said, to be a winner, wit and strength are not enough. Suddenly, a car intercepted them and immediately bombarded their car with bullets. Fortunately, Wynn managed to escape the attack, but his father was trapped in the car. Then with his remaining breath, Wynn's father managed to survive the thugs that attacked him, but suddenly, a bald man appeared. He brought a shotgun and immediately shot Wynn's father brutally, without giving him any room to move so he couldn't fight back. And before Wynn's father breathed his last, the bald man who was apparently a dark magic user absorbed all his energy and then took his amulet. Meanwhile, Wynn was already unconscious because he was quite badly injured. The bald man then threw a grenade to blow up the crime scene to eliminate evidence of the attack. The next day, Wynn woke up in the hospital with two of his friends and said that Wynn's father had prepared for this thing to happen a few days ago as if he already knew that this would happen. When Wynn returned home, he felt devastated by the tragedy that befell him, and the memories of his father made him even sadder. He then decided to send a prayer to his father at the altar in their house. That was when Wynne found a strange book containing sacred magic and powerful spells. Wynne decided to learn from a monk to master dark magic. One of the rituals that Wynne had to do was to tattoo most of his body. The last thing, the monk gave him a cursed doll as his familiar. Eight months later, Wynne attended an event from a cult. This group was led by a woman named May and her right-hand man named Gott. Though the event looked ridiculous, this cult had a lot of members and one of them was Wynne's ex-girlfriend named Nell. On this occasion, Nell told his story that she once had a boyfriend who abandoned her. The breakup made her depressed, but after joining the cult, she started to find new peace and happiness. Before they finished, May invited everyone to dance to vent their stress and problems. After the event, Nell and Gott had a conversation. Wayne was jealous seeing Nell become close to another man. On the other hand, May received a report about the cult member who had defected, and to solve the problem, she sent someone to deal with the defected member. Later in the defected member's place who looked like had just done a live, May's lackey came and asked the reason he defected from the cult. Without hesitation, the member said that he was tired of all their nonsense. Offended by the statement, May's lackey warned him that a bad thing would soon befall him, and not long after, the member was killed with dark magic, which made him choke and cough up blood, leading him to die horribly. Meanwhile, Wynne's revenge mission had begun. He visited a guy who sold antiques. The guy warned him not to come any closer or he would be shot, but Wynne didn't care and immediately beat the guy mercilessly. There, Wynne received new information about the murder of his father, and it turned out that the guy was part of a company that sold magic and cursed objects related to May's cult. The guy then gave Wynne a sales catalog to check whether his father's magic amulet was there or not, but unexpectedly, when Wynne was looking at the catalog, the guy shot him many times. Thinking he had succeeded in killing Wynne, the guy was shocked to see Wynne stand up as if nothing had happened. The guy was choked and forced to say who his father's murderer was, but before a single word could be uttered from his mouth, suddenly, something happened to the guy as he began grimacing in pain that soon killed him. After leaving, Wynne appeared in front of Nell and asked about her involvement with the cult. Wynne warned that the cult was very suspicious and could be dangerous for her, 
and that he was only worried about her safety, but now refused to explain so Wen decided to leave her. Somewhere else, Lieutenant Toon, Inspector Chan, and another officer were currently investigating the mysterious death case. From the results of the autopsy, it was known that the victim suffered internal injuries and all his organs smelled rotten. Lieutenant Toon suspected that dangerous poison was the cause of this death, but in contrast to her, the other officer thought that the murder was caused by an act of necromancy. He then connected their case to the legendary necromancer. Lieutenant Toon was interested in this discussion, but not Inspector Chan, so the discussion didn't continue. From the look on Inspector Chan's face, it looked like he was hiding something. Lieutenant Toon then tried to find other information about necromancy and the legendary necromancer in the library. Meanwhile, Wynne and his friends were talking about a mysterious building where antique heirlooms and amulets were kept by May's cult. One of his friends said that the amulets would be exported to Indonesia because many people were interested in them. In the evening, Wynne and his friend monitored the warehouse in question, but it turned out that there were guards who were completing preparations for the exports. Wynne secretly went into the warehouse to find out deeper, but unfortunately, his cell phone suddenly rang because his friend who was guarding outside called him, stupidly just to remind him to change his cell phone to vibrate mode. Luckily, Wynne wasn't caught and managed to get in after killing the guards. After looking around, Wynne found strong evidence regarding the illegal amulet business. He then torched the place to burn it down. He was stopped by May's lackey, who was strong enough to overwhelm Wynne. Both of them fought and attacked intensely in the middle of the burning flames. When almost defeated, the man suddenly summoned his familiar, a plant monster, but Wynne wasn't scared since he also had one. He summoned a tiger, and without anything stopping Wynne, he managed to defeat the man. The news of the burnt warehouse finally reached God's ears, and how shocked he was to see the condition of his warehouse, which had been burned to ruins. He immediately called May to tell her what happened. After burning down the warehouse, Wynne called Now to tell her that the cult led by May was also involved in drug export. Wynne, who was worried, asked Now to stay away from them. In another place, May and Gott were visiting their lackey, who survived the warehouse fire. May tried to be strong for the losses suffered, but not long after they left, the man began grimacing in pain. Insects were seen on his ivy fluid, and he died horribly. On the other hand, Wynne and his friends went to a club to let go of stress and all the burdens. They played poker and enjoyed the night. Wynne was stalking his ex's social media, and suddenly, the room was bombarded with bullets. Wynne was saved without a single scratch since his skin was invulnerable, but unfortunately, his friend, who was just an ordinary person, did not survive and was killed instantly. After that, a gang of thugs came to attack Wynne. But without difficulty, Wynne was able to finish all of them off easily. Wynne felt deep sadness after losing another person in his life. He felt ashamed because despite being strong, he still failed to save his friends. Somewhere else, Inspector Chan, Lieutenant Toon, and another officer were doing an autopsy on the corpse of May's subordinate. God who had bad intentions manipulated the story to the police that Wynne was the main perpetrator. Fortunately, Lieutenant Toon didn't easily believe it and thought there had to be strong evidence before pointing to the perpetrator directly, but unfortunately, Gut didn't give up yet. He asked the police chief to solve the case and also asked the police to guard May's annual tea party, which would be held at the weekend. May's tea party finally took place with police supervision. May and her assistant were promoting charms that had become bestsellers. Not long after, Wynne appeared at the party and used a time-stopping spell to stop everyone, but unexpectedly, May was able to be free from the shackles of this spell. Wynne accused May of being the killer of his father and that the amulet she had was his father's, but May argued that she got the amulet because of a business deal she had with his father and that she had paid $10 billion. May admitted that she had nothing to do with Wynne's father's death. Not long after, Help from God arrived, and he neutralized Wynne's spell. The police were able to see Wynne's presence clearly and immediately started pursuing him. Wynne was officially a fugitive from the police, and strong evidence of God's slander couldn't be refuted. Wynne was finally caught by Inspector Chan after a bit of chasing, but again, Wynne easily freed himself and paralyzed Inspector Chan. 
As a brave police officer, Inspector Chan didn't give up easily, and he continued to chase Wen until they arrived at a dark alley. There, a tragedy befell Inspector Chan. After the gunshot, Lieutenant Toon and the other officers followed the sound and saw Inspector Chan sitting on the ground and looked possessed. Inspector Chan's condition mysteriously worsened. With his final breath, Inspector Chan told a secret to Lieutenant Toon, and after telling her the secret, Inspector Chan's life could no longer be saved. Lieutenant Toon carried out the last will of Inspector Chan by looking for a file containing information about the legendary necromancer that they had discussed before, a man who was also part of the police, Detective Ithi, who turned out to be the sibling of Inspector Chan. Lieutenant Toon came to a dark prison, a prison that was not made to hold common prisoners, but a special one to detain dark magic users. Apart from the darkness, there were lots of strange ornaments and symbols to seal the cell. Not long afterward, Lieutenant Toon managed to find the prison cell she was looking for. She then spoke to Ithi and told him what had happened to Inspector Chan. Inside, Ithi's appearance was very dirty, but he exuded the aura of a very strong person. With his necromancy abilities, Ithi succeeded in influencing Lieutenant Toon to break the seal so he managed to be free and seek revenge for the death of Inspector Chan, his younger brother. Meanwhile, Wynn was searched by the entire police force. During his escape at the Marquis station, he was again confronted by the lackey sent by May, but without the slightest fear, he fought against them. Unfortunately, because he was outnumbered, Wynn was beaten, so he unleashed his real power, which thanks to that, he was able to finish off all the thugs very easily. After dealing with the thugs, another person suddenly came and looked at Wynn as if he was challenging him to a duel. It was Ithi, the shaman police officer known as the Legendary Necromancer. From the glow of his eyes, Ithi could emit very strong dark energy, but Wynn wasn't afraid the slightest with Ithi's murderous gaze. Their battle was intense with each of them throwing spells at each other. Wynn realized that magic attacks did not affect Ithi, so he changed his strategy to physical attacks, but all of his blows were almost useless because Ithi was able to read every attack that came. Ithi was able to weaken Wen so that he couldn't move. Through his retrocognition abilities, Ithi could find out what really happened to Inspector Chan in the past, and when he found out that Wen was not his brother's killer, Ithi immediately left him. Somewhere else in May's room, May was preparing to sleep. It seemed that she had quite strong black magic, indicated by the tattoos on her body, which were similar to Wen's. Just before he slept, he felt something was not right, and when she saw that the Harglass in her nightstand stopped, she realized Ithi's arrival. Ithi thought that May was the one who killed his brother. He gave her a warning by making May drown in the blood. Meanwhile, Nao and Gott were in a hotel room being intimate. When they left their room, Wynn caught them there. He was heartbroken and decided to leave, but on his way out of there, he was intercepted by the thugs who kept coming to kill him. When he thought he had managed to escape, a sudden attack from Gott landed on his face. Gott was ready to kill Wynn, so Wynn had to defend himself. That was when the disguise that Gott had been hiding was revealed. It turned out that all this time, Gott was the one who killed Wynn's father. Gott immediately launched a series of attacks on Wynn, and because Gott was so strong, it made it difficult for Wynn to defeat him. He managed to break Wynn's hand, but Wynn, with his dark magic, returned his hand back to normal. He then launched another attack, trying to knock God down, but to no avail. God had extraordinary physical endurance, which easily left Wynn battered. Wynn realized that his strength was still far behind, so he summoned his familiar to help him, but unexpectedly, God also had a familiar and summoned his one to beat Wynn's. Wynn's familiar was burned after God used his spell, bull, but luckily, Wynn managed to escape from there. However, his body was badly injured and his hand was crushed. Fortunately, Ithi came to heal him. In another location, May was confiding in Gott. It seemed that she didn't know Gott's real identity yet. She was still thinking positively by planning a prayer ceremony, asking for Gott's protection. Wynn, who was battered, was successfully brought home by his friends, but Lieutenant Toon was already there waiting for them. There, she found many amulets and spells of dark magic. After finding those, she began to believe in shamanic practices. Meanwhile, Wynne was soaked in a herbal potion, 
to restore his condition. A few days later, Wynn's friend came with information that May would be holding another party. The party would be the right moment if Wynn wanted to attack. Lieutenant Toon warned that it could be dangerous because he could be sentenced to prison if he raided her party. Soon after, when they were about to leave, some monsters attacked Wynn's friends and killed him. Wynn, who had once again lost the people closest to him, continued to train to become strong. Meanwhile, Ithi, Gott, and Lieutenant Toon were also doing their own preparation. Turned out the party in question was an idol worship ceremony. All the cult officials were present, including Mei, Nao, and Gott. The first attack was started by Ithi by stopping the time with his spell, but Gott and Mei were able to free themselves without difficulty. The second attack was launched by Wynn, who aimed directly at Mei, and without warning, Gott instead spawned an army of undead that attacked everyone. Mei was confused by the chaos and brutality that occurred. God's true reason was finally revealed, that he was the son of the cult leader before Mei who demanded revenge for the destruction of his family due to Mei's greedy behavior. God's hatred had been cultivated for a long time, and with a very mature plan, through additional power from Wen's father's amulet, God was invincible. He turned Mei into stone and killed her instantly. God and Ithi threw spells at each other to attack. Ithi was able to lock God so that he was unable to move. Then, with his retrocognition ability, Ithi could see the tragedy of the murder of his brother and found out that Gott was the one who killed his brother. Gott then used his power, which was able to absorb magic energy to make Ithi weak. When Wynn saw this, he joined in attacking Gott. The three of them gave each other fierce resistance. Wynn was provoked when he saw his father's amulet in Gott's hand. He then kicked Gott, and the amulet was thrown away from Gott's hand. Ithi saw the chance and launched an attack on Gott, but he managed to survive. He instead got the upper hand when he managed to absorb Ithi's dark energy once again. Gott then summoned his familiar to prevent Wynn from attacking. Wynn also summoned his to save Ithi. Along with Ithi, Wynn worked together to defeat Gott's familiar and destroy it, but Gott didn't stop there and continued to launch unexpected attacks until Lieutenant Toon came to help by shooting the bullets she had prepared but her attack didn't do much damage, and an ordinary people like her was easily knocked down by Gott. Gott then brought Nao in front of Wen to provoke him. Wen begged Gott not to hurt Nao, but he ignored him and killed her. Wen's anger could no longer be controlled, and he tried to fight Gott with the rest of his strength. When Wen and Gott were busy fighting, Ithi managed to secure Gott's amulet. Wen was barely able to survive and Gott immediately absorbed his energy, but fortunately, the police quickly arrived to carry out an ambush. While Gott and Ithi managed to escape from the crime scene, Wynne, who was left behind, became the main suspect. He was taken to the dark magic prison and was sealed very tightly to prevent him from escaping. Meanwhile, Gott was still free and able to spread the terror of black magic to anyone who dared to oppose him. It was then revealed that Ithi had a good intention. During the fight in the cave, he had left the amulet in the hand of Lieutenant Toon. Somewhere else, Lieutenant Toon visited Wynne in prison. There she gave the amulet left by Ithi, which was before held by Gott. She told him to return safely, indicating that she gave him the chance to get away to avenge his father's death and return to his cell. Soon after, the amulet melted and merged with Wynne's body, making him grow stronger. Wynne, who managed to escape from prison, had another duel with Gott in Gott's Museum of Dark Magic. There, Gott showed Wynne the head of Nao that he beheaded after the attack in the cave. That made Wynne furious and immediately attacked Gott, but this time, Gott had a surprise attack. By using the blood of a black dog to suppress Wynne's dark magic, Gott managed to land attacks on him because Wynne's body was no longer invulnerable. Wynne didn't just give up. With struggle and his grudges fuel, he continued to launch repeated attacks until he managed to make Gott cornered, but unexpectedly, Gott was still able to survive and absorb Wynne's energy. Fortunately, the amulet that had merged with Wynne's body protected him from the spell. Wynne then launched the ultimate attack to end Gott. He choked a cursed doll into Gott's mouth, which then turned him into a tree and killed him horribly.